we're going to make a spicy and numbing poached fish from the province of Sichuan. The name is Shui Zhuyu in Chinese, which literally translates to boiled fish. The name actually comes from the fact that we pour boiling hot oil over a pile of garlic, chilies, spring onion, and different spices over top of the fish, which imparts an incredibly pungent fragrance and a punchy umami flavor. Now, Shreju is just a family of different dishes that carry the same flavor profile. You can do this with pork, with beef, but today we're going to be using white fleshed freshwater fish, which is basa. Now, any white fleshed fish will work. If you use sea fish, make sure you just add a little bit less salt. Make sure the fish that you use is not too flaky like cod per se, because as soon as you cook that fish, it'll disintegrate into the soup base, which is not very pleasant. You're going to want to cut the fish diagonally into slices. Now, how thick the slices are is entirely up to you. Thinner slices will get more flavor from the soup base. Thicker slices will retain more flavors of the original fish. Just make sure if you make really thin slices not to overcook the fish, which will become dry and too flaky to eat. Now we're going to prepare the marinade. We're going to start by slicing a spring onion and a small piece of ginger into roughly large chunks. Then we're going to give it a slap with a cleaver or the palm of your hand if you have really, really hard hands to uh, sort of just scrunch it up and let it release all of its juices and oils. If you can't quite crush the piece of ginger like the one we have, which has been sitting out for a while, you can give it some cuts, but don't cut it all the way through. And then you're going to want to find a bowl and uh, throw the pieces of ginger and spring onion into the bowl then pour some warm or boiling water into the bowl and sort of make a tea of the ginger and spring onions. This is going to be the base of our marinade for the fish. Now, marinating the fish, you're first going to want to add just a small bit of salt. Um, how much salt is dependent on how salty your fish is naturally. Then you want to add just a little bit of uh, white pepper, if you don't have white pepper, finely ground black pepper will work, but just a little bit. Now, remember that ginger and spring onion tea that we made, we're going to add a little bit of that. If we add spring onions and ginger to it directly, that'll also work, but it'll be a lot stronger than we really would like. So we're going to use uh, that liquid instead to get some of the fishiness out. And then we added a little bit of rice wine. If you have Shaoxing wine, it'll work. If you have white wine, that'll also work. If you really have nothing else, mirin would work. We're gonna add a little bit of potato starch. Again, corn starch would work, wheat starch, uh, mung bean starch, you know. As long as it's not something like tapioca starch, it would probably all be all right. We're going to just get that incorporated with the fish. The mixture we're adding in is some starch and then we're going to add a little bit of egg white and then we're going to add some more starch. That mixture will help lock in uh, the moisture for the fish so when we do cook it we're not going to lose too much of the uh, moisture from, from the fish itself so it's not going to be overly flaky and dry uh, which will be a lot less pleasant when you're eating it. Again the amount of potato starch is enough um, it's dependent on really how the fish feels as you as you're sort of incorporating it. The fish should just just stick together a little bit, uh, and and when you get that texture that you want with a light slimy coat on top of the uh, fish, that'll be uh, that'll be enough starch. And then just seal it in with a little bit of vegetable oil, um, so the fish does not uh, become dry and stick together. And yeah, just let this sit there uh, while we prep the other things. Don't let it marinate for too long. It'll become a little bit too salty if you leave it there for too long. Okay, now let's prep the vegetables and um, greens uh, that we're going to need for the rest of the dish. We're going to get a cabbage and quarter it now. If you don't have cabbage, bok choy will work. Any form of green leaf a uh, sort of vegetable that doesn't have a distinctly strong taste will be fine. If you use lettuce, it'll be even okay if you have nothing else. We're going to quarter it and chop it into sort of rough chunks. 
uh, sort of bite size uh, and a bit more big chunks. And then get some pickled chilies. We're going to just chop that into little bits. And then we're going to finely chop a small piece of ginger. Um, just about half a thumb's worth uh, of ginger is probably okay. And then a whole lot of garlic. You can do this by just sort of crushing it and then slicing it into um, little bits and then cutting it again. This is sort of uh, the way to do it if you're if you've got enough uh, time on your hands and if you just get lazy, just just roughly chop it up. Um, as long as it's relatively fine, it'll be okay. Okay, we're going to now do some of the prep work for the dry ingredients. Just get a small saucepan or whatever it is and get it you know warmed up, not too hot. And then we're going to add in a blend of green and red Sichuan peppercorns. I'm gonna toast that, uh, these until it's nice and dry and sort of aromatic. And then we're gonna stick all of that into a, uh, we used a coffee grinder, it's a burr grinder that we used. If you have a pestle mortar, you can grind it in that or a food processor, but we want it to be toasted and then ground into a fine powder. We did much of the same thing again with the chilies. We want to toast it so it releases all of its oils and aromatics. Uh, so it becomes a little bit crispy. After you toast it, let it cool off a little bit in a bowl. We flash freeze it in our freezer, um, which then it'll be you know crispy enough to crush. We crushed it with our hands and sort of just removed all of the seeds from um, the chilies because you don't want too much of the seeds that get into the boiling hot oil. The seeds taste bitter and it doesn't really have any of the aromatic qualities and it's really spicy. Like good Sichuanese cuisine should have a bit of spice that hits the front of your palate but nothing that sort of leaves a lingering burn. And if you leave in the chili seeds, it'll have the unpleasant type of spice, which is um, not really characteristic of Sichuanese cuisine. Okay, we can get to some of the exciting things, and now we are ready for uh, some actual cooking. We're going to first quickly fry off the dried chilies, um, the pickled chilies, minced garlic, and minced ginger uh, in a pan. We're going to just get it to release all of its aromas and all of its juices, and then we're going to add in some of the greens uh, that we picked for this dish. We're going to just fry it off a little bit until it wilts. Um, we don't need too much color on it. Uh, we just need sort of it to not taste raw. Uh, and then we're, we can pick all of this off into a um, clay pot, or if you have a casserole pan or just a really large bowl would work. Um, as long as it can handle some of uh, the heat that we're going to add on later. Uh, the fish later is going to go on this. I'm going to pour hot oil right over this. So just make sure you have something that can handle the heat. Now we're going to quickly make the broad bean based soup base. We're going to again fry off a little bit of garlic and pickled chilies, which add some heat and sort of aromatics as a base in some oil and then we're going to cook some red chili oil with broad bean paste or dou ban jiang. Uh, you can probably find this somewhere in your local Chinese or Asian supermarket and if you can't, if you look hard enough you can probably find this somewhere online. This is preserved so I, I don't see why they can't ship it uh, across the country for you. Now the idea is we we're going to add enough of this as the base uh, aromatic for the soup base, but this also adds some nice umami and savory uh, sort of salinity to, to the soup base. Cook this out until it releases all of its red oils, and then we can add a little bit of rice wine again to this uh, to help it release all of its oils. Now add a little bit of light soy to the hot oil. Make sure you cook it off, otherwise it'll taste raw. Um, there's almost sort of a raw soy fishy taste to uncooked soy sauce, so make sure you get it to a nice hot temperature first before adding in water. Now we're going to season the soup base with a little bit of white pepper, a generous pinch of sea salt or two, and a big dollop of MSG or chicken powder to taste to give you that umami experience. Uh, if you really, really don't like MSG, you can skip it, but if you want the authentic 
Citroenese experience, you want a good amount of MSG. We're going to add some slur starch slurry to the soup base, which will help thicken it up just a little bit so it'll cling on to the fish uh, when we when we do end up eating it. It's sort of like almost a gravy texture, but not quite as thick. When you put the fish into the soup base to cook, they should qu cook qu fairly quickly. If it's a rolling boil, something like 20 seconds would probably cook thin slices of fish all the way through. Uh, you don't want to overcook it. Make sure you slide the pieces uh, of fish in the soup base a little bit so that they don't stick together and then just let them cook. After they cook, we're going to take them out piece by piece into the clay pot that we have our vegetables in. Uh, when you are taking them out, make sure you get all the pieces of, of uh, chili and uh, peppercorns off of the fish so the presentation is a little bit cleaner. And then we're going to pour the extra soup base over so that they are just submerging the vegetables and the fish. Okay, now on to the most exciting part. We're going to pour hot oil over a pile of spices. We're going to add our citron peppercorn flakes right on the bottom because they burn the quickest, so we want to protect them. Uh, and then we're going to add our large chunks of chili flakes on top. Make sure there's enough dry chilies to cover the entire surface. Um, of the the pot and then we're going to add a lot of minced garlic and um, green onions now get your hot oil and just pour it all over the surface you should hear that nice sizzling sound if pouring once isn't enough you can pour twice and there it is the mouth watering shui jui or citronese poached fish if you finished a fish or the vegetables too quickly you can always use this as a hot pot base and add more things to it one of my favorite things to do is to eat this with rice for the first meal and then when we're left with just the vegetables and the soup base i like to then add some hand pulled noodles uh, into the pot which is equally as exciting and delicious i hope you enjoy